Today I have a rather compact, compact cassette player. Little Senyo Walkman. Normally I don't like working on Walkmans much, but this one's only ten dollars. It's an auto reverser, so it's got the little LEDs there. And we've got metal normal on it. Little Sanyo M-G95. So I guess somewhere in the 80s. Made in Japan. Maybe a little bit dirty on the battery contacts. Nothing too bad there, but suppose it doesn't work. And I thought, why not? For that price, I could probably put it back together and sell it on eBay and get me money back if nothing else. But it would be interesting just to have a look. They're not much fun to work on normally. Probably just needs a belt or something in theory, but that was the long screw up in that top corner. I do when they use multiple length screws. But might be able to work that out anyway. Is there something holding this or just clipped on? Just clipped on. Little surface mount chip there, BA5204. Whatever that is. And this is where you already hit a wall and can't really do anything. Belt's on it by the look of it. I guess we could probably just shove a couple of batteries in and see what happens. See if anything happens. Of course, got a radio in it, radio or tape. And we seem to be dead. Assuming those batteries are any good. Better double check them, I guess, and assuming I've got them in the right way, which I think I have. Where does it show you the batteries? Bottom one positive, that end, yeah. And uh, it's a little corroded on that one. Quite a bit. <laughs> Quite crunchy. Just a bit of green stuff growing on it. Always double check the batteries. Normally with these you'd have, have a set up with the power adapters ready to go on them. And, but normally you just plug these in and use them in your normal amp. A little low but yeah, I think they're alright. Strange not to have no power but it can happen. So definitely bottom one with the positive. Yep, the way it looks because the springs usually the giveaway. And they're in series normally. Oh, that was it maybe. <laughs> well, we've now got take up, rewind, fast forward. How do we change direction? Oh, that's a reverse. Oh, do we press both? Oh, something. Oh, God, what are they doing there? They're both going in opposite directions. That shouldn't happen. Was that because I pressed them both? That was weird. <laughs> Yeah, that one's kind of moving a bit. Maybe something was catching where it shouldn't. This actually seems to be working. And they do have a little eject thing here. I think it only works with the tape in there. Where is it? Oh, yeah, there, little lever, I think. Yeah, a little thing here that flicks it, but it pushes on the tape. So if you haven't got a tape in there, there's nothing to push the door. But yeah, interesting looking little mech. Radio tuning dial there. FM stereo mono. That should get the little tuner going across there. Yep. So I might hook into the headphones. Now oh, I've got an RCA lead here. Well, I hope it's that simple. They're never that simple, though. There'll be something else wrong with it. Up to the amp. That's the way you test everything. That didn't sound the best. Got the radio. Hmm. Oh, that's done something. Seems awfully high up, but uh, okay. That's often another issue with these, is whether the headphone socket's still connected very well. Seems to be if that's where it's soldered. 
Give you something already. There's just a lot of interference tonight or something. Dunno. Yeah. Oh, I was at the end. Sometimes it's the lead that picks it up. The headphones. Hmm, thought that switch was a little dicky, but I think it's all right. Yeah. It doesn't sound very good. Press this well. Oh, what I've got to. Doesn't like the end of the tape. So when it's getting towards that end there, almost stopping. So I'd say the belt's probably not as good as there's actually two belts in there. You can see the belt wobbling around, it's not usually a good sign. That's very wowy. Yeah, that ejects when it's so that may be just my lead, but it's probably the headphone socket. Not real happy, I don't think. Yeah, that's got a lot of wow. Mind you again that how good these batteries are may be affecting that a bit. That's why I like to run them off a power supply. I do have some adapters for those. Various sockets, that's the very tiny whatever they were, I can't remember the millimeters now. It looks pretty corroded as well, so it's probably not gonna be the greatest. I think that screw there is probably holding things together. There's another tiny screw there. How do, they, how do these LEDs come out of here? Maybe the whole thing flicks up. Oh, does this end plate come off? No, you just got to Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> For a minute, I thought that was part of it. I assume those LEDs come with the board. And where's this headphone socket? It is those. I think three pins there. Look at like someone's resoldered it. Well, it's got a lot of solder anyway. Doesn't mean it's any good. Usually you can see the cracks in them when they're gone though. That looks like it was okay to me. Ooh, what's going on there? If there is meant to be something there, this doesn't feel like there actually is something there. That could be another sign that something's broken or something. You should always try and feel the pin. It's sticking through there, isn't it? There it is. For some reason I couldn't really feel it. But I always try and feel the pin sticking through the board. Because I've had them, yeah, these, these will break off on the other side of the board or something. That's another reason you kind of feel them if they move too much. Just make sure they're through the solder or through the board on into the solder and it's not soldering the best on that side. 
that's another thing that could be iffy that it's not taking solder that's got it probably won't make the slightest difference but it's worth a try sometimes it's a contacts inside them and you've got to really replace the yeah it still sound a bit iffy and you actually got to replace the sockets they did get quite a bit of abuse just because they stuck out of the unit and these things were often walked around with people wore them when jogging or whatever and even just moving around anywhere they do tend to get bumped so headphone sockets were a major issue with these things now yeah, what's holding it together probably these wires and what's that other screw go into it goes into I don't know what but everything's moving with it you think those wires that power socket's not holding it oh do we need the it's definitely held there somewhere do we need the battery to come with it I don't think so this is always the fun trying to work out those wires are pr pretty tight so that's part of the issue I think so they taped onto there. I think I'm gonna have to remove that bit of yeah that thing and probably pull all the cassette ones towards the cassette player. I don't think that'd hold the whole thing together, but maybe these two have to go or something. I can get some length on them. And these ones I think as well are a bit yeah, slowly lifting. Something still feels like it's hanging on. There's a brown, it's that brown wire. Where does that go, I wonder? Oh, it's the one that's actually got the, had the screw on it, so that does come out of the way. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Now these LEDs here don't seem to want to, I'm not sure if they're actually sticking through the front or whether, yeah, they, it looks like they move. Now this radio is also, yeah, that's it. Something's coming. Gotcha. So the LEDs come out of that, and that little piece doesn't come with them. Ah, oh, we finally wiggled it loose. And again, we've got one of these circuit boards with the printed stuff on it. With that little PRC HDK on it. It was one particular company. Yeah, the pin on that actual power socket's bent. Thought it looked a bit close to one side of the socket. Someone's done something there to it. It's actually in better condition than I thought. It looked corroded. But maybe it's just a bit dirty. I've got a couple of trim pots there. A little radio dial cord in it, so it's not a mechanically, mechanically coupled one. And these are full of those little smaller electrolytic capacitors that can play up, but generally these didn't run hot. And we've got a date here. 19th of April, 84 on the motor which is a Matsushita board, look at it, HDN4A3LB always nice to see a date so this is a sort of mid 80s one and I don't think we need to actually take the mech out, we've got a couple of screws on these, a couple of screws there that probably flips it out I guess we could have a look, it wouldn't hurt to actually flip it out and have a look at the top side and give it a clean and stuff if it needs it which it no doubt will and yeah, a couple of screws under the door that looks like it's are they scrapes or cracks hard to tell that's got a few lines around there I assume just the fact that all the buttons are there's two more here I was going to say it should flip out and the buttons slide out but of course if you haven't undone the screws on this side It's not going to do much. Hmm, that one's already loose. Are they the same length as the others? Thank God they did that. It's always nice when they're all the same. This should, I assume, flip up and slide out. Yeah, nice and simple. Senior always made pretty easy to work on stuff. Okay, I found a build about the right size. We'll see if that fits without too much tension so it's got to go around this capstan under that one 
and then onto the lower part of this pulley and it's so far it's feeling like it's going to be pretty good but it doesn't mean it will bit of a one to get on there and that's it that's better yeah I think that's acceptable yeah that's pretty good fairly non-slip toss that one and we've got to get another little one which will be probably in the other belt kit or remains of belt kits that I've put together all the small bits out of Hopefully we've got one that sort of size. This one's on top of you, that's got to be close. Mm, maybe a bit big, but... I don't think that one was particularly slippy. It was a bit lumpy, but not... I think that's just a bit too... A slightly smaller one would be better. It's not tensioned out that much. same size, I don't know, that's about it. A bit smaller. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that'll work. Uh, it's not the best made belt on earth. Some of these Chinese ones are a little dodgy. It's more rectangular shaped, I think. I was finding some of these. Let's see if I've got a better one there, the same size. Yeah, I think that one's looking a bit better than that other one. So yeah, I should have stuck with the original belt supplier. Yeah, that's a bit better, I think. I think I'll toss that other one in the rubbish. No point hanging onto it. So some of these suppliers aren't too bad, the ones with the little red and blue labels, whatever in the kit seem to be alright, and that was a different one I ordered for some reason. And I don't think they're as good. So what are we gonna do? Get this. Doesn't really want to flip back over. Why is it just a bit short? I think I've got to lift that up. Probably should screw this mech back in first. At least put some screws back in just to hold it in the case properly, I think. Hopefully I won't have to touch it again. Now it's had a clean and everything. And there's a couple of screws inside. But sometimes Walkmans were easy to fix like this. Other times they could be an absolute nightmare. Some of the AOA auto reverse ones and stuff, if someone had damaged them or something, they were pretty horrible things to get going at times. Amazing how much time you can waste on some of these little things. Mainly because you've got to keep putting them back together and pulling them apart again. Usually to test them guess I probably should put that earth back in place I don't know that was that gold screw and at least it holds the board in I think that's where that shield went but I could be wrong. Actually, would it, did it go over there? It would be more likely because that looks like the cassette head. And that's often the problem. I don't always take notice of what I'm doing. Yeah, and the fact that corners off it. Oh, yeah, and I could see that I see. Usually you work it out in the end. But that's just a shield, I guess, with people up close to it and stuff. Shield the heads a bit. A bit of 50 hertz hum or something. 
and we've still got the issue of whether this antenna socket's very uh headphone socket's any good which listen to that probably not Oh, I've got no power again. What mode are we in? Should I put that in the right way? Oh, I don't think that's actually got on the spring, that one. Oh, maybe it is. No! Okay, that's weird. Ah. Oh. I was going to say, it felt a bit tight that battery and some idiot put it, so it pushed the ribbon in between the battery and the... I'm just going to watch that with these ribbons. They make a good insulator and I should have made sure it was around the battery anyway because it makes it a lot easier to get it out. But these things haven't. But we still don't seem to have any action in either mode. That's radio and that's tape. Yeah, we're not getting any audio, are we? Is that actually making contact? I think it should be. That spring is rather bent out of shape. I think part of the problem is it doesn't go into the... Someone's definitely messed with it. They've unsprung it a bit. I need to twist it around and try and get it back under the plastic if it would help. Or maybe that is meant to stick out and it's just bent outwards, I don't know. That's probably more like it though. And I've still got nothing. What the? Oh, is there a switch or something? Though I'm not getting radio. Ah, it's always something. A couple of fresher batteries might be a good idea. A couple of brand new ones out of the packet is always a good idea. Don't think there's anything else causing any issues. Unless a wire has come off, I didn't... Ah, oh, it has come off, oh no. <laughs> the orange wire. Now where the hell did that go? That's always a disaster when a wire breaks off and it does happen with these things and the worst thing is you can't always tell where it came from but we have a power socket here so that should help oh does that go to the battery I think it did usually you can see where the wire was soldered and where it's broken off but this one I can't actually tell so I assume it doesn't go where the purple wire was it definitely went here somewhere There maybe, oh, that's the black one, the yellow one, are we on radio mode? One way is to see if it makes any sound I guess, but probably shouldn't be just randomly poking it around. Hmm, nothing. Pretty sure that is the positive terminal. So, that's the socket, it's got one, two, three pins, one goes to the purple wire, which who knows where that goes, one's, I assume the black wire is connected to the other one, no, oh, so maybe, the, oh, maybe it does go to that one then. Why wasn't I hearing anything happening? Oh, well, I've got no batteries in there at the moment. Oh, I don't want to put those old ones in there. That is the most likely place for it to go. Oh, 
nothing. What the hell? We do have some sort of switch or something there. Is it a switch under there? Or is it an IC? That's got to be it, surely. Usually you can find the broken off bits of wire in there somewhere. And that doesn't seem to have them. Well, where else can it go? What's the other wire here? Oh, it's the spring. Well, what is the spring connected to though? I don't actually know. It must be this pu oh, yeah, the purple wire. So the purple wire goes there. We should have three volts to the purple wire from the orange wire. But we don't. Oh, is that because it just moved? There it is. God, they're touchy. Purple wire. That's connected to that one, so it's definitely not that one. You'd think it, well, it must go to here then. Those two are connected together. That's one of the power rails. And the negative one of that. So this is here, this is the tip of the socket. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, so it disconnects the negative of the battery. So that must be where it goes. Is there a broken wire there somewhere? Oh, yeah, there might have been a bit, a bit in there. Or is that just the end of the other one? Who knows? I don't want to use those pliers, those cutters, because they're the ones with the circuit board. Just remembered last time I realised they don't strip wires very well. That sounds like something's definitely connecting. So that's it. The orange wire likely goes to where the yellow wire is. Guess I should really disconnect the battery while I solder it on. Because that gets to the tip of the socket. I think that's correct. It wouldn't matter if the battery went there, because as long as it disconnects the other one, that should be fine. Oh yeah, we've got a light on. But we don't have anything else on. Ugh, dude, what's going on? Why does that come on when I'm in radio mode? Ah, oh, there's the volume at least. There we go. That's tape mode. Oh, now it's running. About time. And that just shows whatever direction it goes, I guess. Yeah, <sighs> what a lot of messing around. Always a wire has to come off. Brian. Yeah, doesn't sound any better. The belt's still wobbling a bit. Ooh, something's scraping. That ain't a good sign. So maybe I've got a wire in the way or something. Anything's possible with these things. Or there is another issue, but I don't think it made that scraping sound before. Can't see anything scraping on the captains. That sounds better there though. If you put new belts in and it's worse, then it's the actual motors playing up. So that's no good. Oh. Remove power. That's always a good idea. 
What's on this now? Does not like coming out. <sighs> Come on, LEDs. That's your issue. Let's get rid of that other thing. What's holding this here? Is that built too tight? I wouldn't have thought so, but it's possible it doesn't like it. That feels spot on. I wonder if that one's just a bit too tight. I don't think so. It should be about perfect. Just ever so much tension on it. Could be slightly highly strung. It's way too big, I think. Uh, it fits. Yeah, it's got tension on it. Just seems a little loose. But maybe it's that picky. Let's try running this thing in pieces. It will have that earth wire off. Where has that gone? Just make sure it doesn't short on anything. It's going to be a bit hummy and stuff probably. Now do I have to press a switch? How does the motor... Yeah, that was it. Yeah, Certainly not great. One thing I did forget to check is does that spin nicely there? Yeah, it seems to. So I think the motor might be a bit knackered in this thing. Yeah, I don't think that belt was too tight, but putting a looser belt on it makes it happier, but still about as bad as it originally was, I think. I'm not sure if I can get these little motors anymore. I'll have to have a look, I guess. I'll put it back together anyway. Oops, now that, oh, that little piece does push out. Oh, there you go. Maybe I should have popped that out. Uh, which side? Oh, it doesn't matter. And that's got it. Oh, gotta get that end plate on as well. Probably a good idea to do that now. Sound too happy. Yeah. Don't tell me. Yeah, not real good, and there's still something with those battery terminals. Maybe it's the bottom one. I didn't, don't think I gave that one a scrape. Quite green still. I guess I'll take some of the stuff off it. And I guess the other end, make sure we give that a scrape. And even that spring. Uh, I think the headphone socket's still dicky as well. It's almost passable, but 
don't know why it's still picking up harm possibly because I haven't got the back on and not everything screwed down or is that the uh, I think the actual earth making a break in here on this headphone thing so headphone sockets dicky the batteries aren't connecting 100% not quite sure why they think that would be enough to do I need to make that spring a bit longer could just be that someone's obviously been playing around this spring a bit so it could be that it's not pressing hard enough I promise it doesn't sit on the back of the battery too well so it might be a little bit better yeah I think it might be slightly less well than before still doesn't sound 100% to me it doesn't help that the headphones are sort of it's almost like the earth is dropping off so they're not sounding quite right sometimes you get it so the two channels sort of go in series instead of each having their own earth but it's not the greatest walkman on earth that's for sure it would get you by in a pinch if you really wanted audio to sit on the loose or on the move or if you wanted FM radio or something to be fine until they I guess make that all go digital so they can set off the spectrum probably a matter of time before it's all that DAB stuff and they make all these things obsolete let's see how hummy it is I think a lot of that hum is coming from the headphone sockets dodginess let's get the batteries in there and sort of in place probably it might make them a little bit more reliable It's not too bad. Where's the test tape gone? A fair bit of warbling in there. Yeah, maybe that volume control is a bit diggy as well. Anything's possible with this stuff. Yeah, that's alright, I think. Yeah, not really an acceptable amount of wow. But, you know, if you really wanted to listen to it, you probably wouldn't notice it that much. Still a little bit of hum there. But anyway, it's, I guess for $10 you don't get much. I think it's slightly better the wow on it, but it's still not really what I'd call acceptable might get you by at a pinch but not a great unit I don't think that's an original factory fitting is it? Oh, did they have I'm trying to remember, did they have velcro on some of these things to go on in a little case that goes on on your belt or something it might have been something like that it does look like it's in a little square depression there so I better not rip that off, it might be a factory thing. And one thing I better do is take the batteries out. I don't want to find that in 10 years with especially those new energizers like the leak. Or is the Duracell one of them? Both of them probably given the way things are these days. So I think that's about all I can do with that one at the moment. I suspect that motor's probably on its way out. The pin trolls I think will look good and everything. I guess that's one thing I should do is just make sure they spin. They feel right when I cleaned them. Yeah, they're pretty free. So yeah, I think that, that could ideally do with a new motor. I might even look up whether you can still get Walkman motors. I have replaced them in the past, I think, but I can't remember if there was a lot of difference between them or they're all pretty well the same. 
I get a feeling there were a few different types and then you still got the problem with the, if it is this actual headphone socket that's playing up and they often did possibly you could unsolder that and try and either clean or both clean and retention the contacts in it I think I've had some success at actually repairing them but yeah I don't think I'd bother spending the money putting a new motor in it so I don't know if I'd bother pulling it apart again to fix that either but anyway, thanks for watching.